So right now, I think there's a unique opportunity for Christian content creators when it comes to YouTube and social media. And in this video, I just wanted to actually share just kind of from the heart as well as get into six things I wrote down and a bunch of different Bible verses that I think we need to know as Christians. Now, as you might know, Think Media podcast, um, our brand, Think Media we help people with cameras and YouTube, and we have a, a divergent audience with diverse beliefs and backgrounds and business owners and all kinds of people. But uh, our message definitely resonates with those that would say, you know, I'm a Christian and I've got some, that's that's my uh, faith personally. And so I really have some powerful things I want to share that I think will be valuable to you. And, um, you know, if, if you're, uh, not a Christian, then you may not want to watch this video, but you're certainly welcome here as well. So, um, you know, Billy Graham said that I believe one of the next great moves of God is going to be through believers in the marketplace. And I think that there's a massive opportunity right now. If you have a, a message, a business, if you're a Christian business owner, a Christian content creator, a kingdom entrepreneur, uh, to really lean in because there's massive opportunity happening specifically with YouTube and for content creators. And so um, let's dive into some of the thoughts that I wrote down. But number one is we were created to create. Um, you know, God is a creator. And what's fascinating to me is the fifth word in the Bible is God revealing himself as a creator. It says, in the beginning, God created. How crazy is it that the first thing that God revealed about himself was not that he was loving, was not that he was holy, was not any of these other things, but that he was a creator. And ultimately being made in the image of God, the Hebrew word for that is bara, and it's to create, to shape, and to form. You know, what we do as content creators is we're making something out of no nothing. We're using our phones and cameras. We are telling stories. We're building businesses. We are launching uh, products. We're creating something. I believe we are most like our, uh, we are looking like God, created in God's image when we are creating and you were created to create god is a maker you were created to make and build something and so i think that now is a massive time if you've had something stirring in your heart to share um something to put out there in the world this will be the time to jump in what are you waiting for what's holding you back and by the way i'm going to be doing q a here um in a little bit towards the end and um smash like if you're getting value and uh, let's go number two. We have a, we were given a mission from Jesus. Um, the Great Commission says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, as surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Here's what I want to lean in on. Teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. You know, when Jesus said this at the end of the book of Matthew, the question was, well, what did he teach and what did he tell? What, did, what, what, what was the content of that? You know, fast forward to today, we have the full Bible, the full canon, and it's all inspired. But in the context of this quote from Jesus, he was referring to some things that were just shared over the previous months and years. And he was like, these are the things you should teach everybody. And by the way, the Great Commission is not just for a pastor, or for a church. It's for anybody that would call themselves a Christ follower. So what I think this is so important for content creators, number one, we were created to create. Number two, we were given a mission from Jesus is it is my conviction that this isn't just for Christian, that, it, that the only type of content creators representing Jesus should be creating Christian content. Fair? Um, in fact, sometimes people are like, I just, I didn't even really know, Sean, that you were a, a Christian. Um, that kind of surprised me. Because, you know, I didn't hear you talk about it or something. And the reason was that for that had a lot to do with the fact that I don't do Christian camera reviews. I don't believe there's such a thing. You know what I mean? Like, what does it make sense? You just do camera reviews. I think there's something about being able to be salt and light. If you do have a Bible study channel, a discipleship channel, you're, you're creating Christian content that's overtly Christian. That's amazing. But I think there's a lot of opportunity. And so when Jesus said, hey, teach disciples go make disciples and teach them everything i commanded you what are some of the stuff that jesus taught well from an overview i looked at matthew and looked through the gospels he taught stuff like don't be angry with people so when i think about the power of starting a youtube channel we can start a youtube channel around so many different niches or backgrounds or topics 
So there could be uh, there could be personal development channels, right? He taught have integrity in your sexuality. You teach about relationships. You could talk about YouTube channels that are about these different areas of life. Uh, this is probably the most overtly scripture based video I've ever done. But like you don't you don't got to be quoting scripture necessarily to teach a biblical wor worldview or to share the highest level principles that exist in the created universe created by God, which would be the very word of God. So what else? He said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be people of your world, your word. So in business, like a business channel, that's the number one business verse in the Bible, I think, is let your yes be yes and your no be no. So like make a promise and deliver on your promise. Can you imagine? I went to the restaurant. They promised me the food would be good. It was good. I gave them five stars on Yelp. The restaurant blew up. I made a promise as a Christian coach to deliver a result. Someone hired me. I delivered the result. They gave me a great review. Like that's like the number one verse of business. So, so just this idea that there could be emotional intelligence channels, you know, personality tests. You could be talking about relationships. You could be talking about business. Don't retaliate when you're wrong. Love your enemies. Give to the needy. Opportunities for nonprofits or philanthropic efforts. Uh, make your business about more than money. Helping people life coaches, helping people navigate life and go to a deeper level. Because if if life was only about money, right, then we'll end up with an empty life. Um, don't judge others. Um, pray. Don't be anxious or worry. Uh, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Be careful with who you partner with. These are just like a couple quick overviews of the stuff that Jesus taught on. So it's like when I think about people in our community, it's like we can have RV channels and DIY channels and artistic channels and business channels and personal finance channels. What's interesting is that's all in there. Jesus taught on all that stuff, right? And so number two is we were given a mission. And I think there's a unique opportunity for Christian content creators to fulfill the mission of Jesus in some cases start a Bible study channel. That's amazing. You know, start a channel for your church. But on the other hand too, we can fulfill the great commission partly with YouTube, with social media, right? I think that's a massive opportunity. Let's go to number three. Number three, we are called to be salt and light. Check out this from the message paraphrase, this verse in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It says this, here's another way to put it. You're here to be light bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers and you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you on a hilltop on a light stand, shine. Keep an open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous father in heaven. Man, I love that. You are here to be light and to bring out the God colors in the world. So if you've got, you want to build a brand, you want to create a merch line, you want to launch music, you want to inspire people with creativity, you want to help bullet journals, you're here to bring out the God colors in the world to help people. And like the NIV, it talks about your salt and light, a city on a hill not to be hidden so that people would see your good works and praise your father in heaven. Question is, how can they see your good works if you're not uploading videos? How can they see good works if you get distracted or you get discouraged and you get sidelined and you're not posting? What would it look like if we were creating content that brought the God colors out in the world? And, you know, there's an old like saying that it's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. And our conviction kind of at Think Media, I know there's all different expressions of Christianity is Sometimes I get a little uncomfortable, though, when Christians are just known for what they're against and not for what they're for, when they're just known for maybe picketing in front of places and criticizing things they don't agree with. While maybe you feel called to that, that's between you and God. But I think the big opportunity is rather than curse the darkness, it's better to light one candle. What does that mean? There's a book called Next Christians by Gabe Lyons, and it talks about the way to actually shape culture is not to curse culture, but it's to create more culture. So if you want to really influence the music industry, it's not to just be like, oh, that music is bad. It's you go make some good music. If you really want to influence the YouTube world or the social media world, go make the best content in the world. Actually light a candle, upload some content. Now, I know that there's a time and place for ideas, uh, idea wars, debates, um, 
you know, speaking directly to different ideologies and worldviews. And I'm all for it. If you feel called to political places or all these different things, but there's just such a, a massive opportunity for you to be salt and light and to go public with this and to shine like a city on a hill. And I think this makes people uncomfortable because some people, especially Christians, they're like, I just don't want to promote myself. It's a good, it's a good point. Cause we need to be humble. Right. But there's a difference between toxic ambition or selfish ambition and godly ambition. And if your godly ambition is that God would be glorified through your works, that you'd bring out the God colors in the world, that you recognize there's a lot of evil and there's a lot of falsehood and there's a need of truth and there's a need of beauty and there's a need of God's wisdom being brought into the world. That's a pretty good reason to shine bright. So those, that's a good reason to try to go viral. That's a good reason to try to get subscribers. It's a good reason. And it's literally a command. Like Jesus is like, look, yo, you need to shine brighter. Yeah, you need to, you need to, you're a city on a hill. I'm not trying to hide you. Like you are light bearers, um, ultimately, not so that we'd have glory for ourselves, but that we could give glory to God, right? And so we are called to be salt and light. And as you may know, salt is a preserving agent. You know, sometimes people go, man, social media is pretty dark. There's a lot as a father now with a two and a half year old and a six month old. Oh, social media has got a lot of darkness on it. Fair enough. And you should definitely be thoughtful and uh, for yourself or for your family or for your kids. But why? And the reason I wanted to make this video, too, is just because as a Christian myself, this is I'm a very familiar with this world, been in church for the last lot of years, you know, maybe since 2003 or 20 years or something like really in, in church. So I've been Christian for a while and, and certain mindsets I'll see as people hesitate. Oh, I just want to be humble. I don't know. I don't know if that's real humility. It's probably false humility because meanwhile, God's calling you to shine and to go do something and build something and reach someone and impact someone. And that sometimes we don't, uh, we're, we need a preserving agent. Salt is a preserving agent where oh, social media is so dark. Well, then why don't you light a light to, to stand for truth, to, to counteract if the people are creating other culture? And a lot of people trying to cancel Christian voices. Um, it, it seems to be that it's not a very popular, those that are convicted with Christian values are not very popular in culture these days. Um, but ultimately, it is our responsibility understanding that that's just going to be what it is. And what shocks me, is people get mad when Christians share their point of view, but a lot of people aren't getting mad when other people share their point of view. I'm a free speech person. That's why I think it's it's everybody's freedom to create YouTube videos. It's your tube. So this is a message, an urgent message to you as a Christian content creator or someone who's aspiring to do that. Plenty of other people are being very loud about their beliefs, their values, their worldviews, and that's their choice to do. And I respect their freedom to do that because that's what free speech really is. Here's my question. Where are the Christians? Where, where are, where everybody else is being loud, sharing their worldview, and that's their free will to do that. Why aren't you? You're called to be salt, light, to shine. And it has been, uh, every once in a while, someone catches vision in our community, like, man, it'd be really awesome if there was like more positive content, more uplifting content. Maybe you feel like you're called to be a kid's creator. Now that I have my son who watches YouTube kids, I'm like, we need, I was talking to Griffin Fox this weekend at church about this, just hanging out outside in Las Vegas. And, and, and he was like, I was like, bro, you could really create some amazing kids content. He's been in kids ministry and all this stuff. And I was like, but we don't need just like one channel creating like great children's content. We need thousands. Like there, do you understand how big there's 2.6 billion monthly active users on YouTube right now? There's 50 billion monthly shorts views being consumed. Q YouTube Kids is this massive app. And again, while I don't necessarily agree, or there's plenty of stuff I don't agree with, I believe it's their freedom to upload. It is everybody's freedom to upload whatever content they want, according to YouTube's community guidelines, right? And so rather than spend all this time analyzing and calculating how dark the world is, I'm just... I'm just challenging us together and myself. Why don't we light a candle? Why don't we go start creating great content? So if you're just joining, uh, my name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's funny and cheesy, but true. 
Um, and we're talking about six things uh, that I've kind of discovered in scripture that I think we need to know as Christian content creators. Um, and that could be that you have a, a Bible study channel, or it could just be that you're a business owner, a content creator, an entrepreneur, you're building a personal brand, you're a ministry, you're a pastor who wants to get your message out there or something. Um, and, and you may be overtly, you know, a Christian channel, or you may just be like a faith-based person who's really also saying, you know, how can I use YouTube and social media to spread messages that matter or to just build my business to solve pro entrepreneur solve problems for a profit. So how can I weave this into my business? And I think the opportunity is, and I'll do some Q and a here in a while. And thanks for being here live. Zeb, I see you and Skelky and I see you Sharon and Anthony and Brandon and Zeb. Um, that's right. Pastor Trey Van Camp. We need thousands to of us to press upload to the glory of God. I agree 100%. Okay. So, um, number one, we were created to create. You were created in the image of God. The fifth word in the Bible is in the beginning, God created. The first thing God revealed about himself was that he was a creator and you were made in his image. You got to press record. Uh, we were given a mission by Jesus, one, to teach everything he commanded and he taught on everything. So there's an opportunity for channels from a Christian worldview or, or Judeo-Christian values worldview. There's an opportunity for business channels and motherhood channels and family channels and parenting channels and education channels and arts and entertainment and media and all these different things. And that's a mission, not just to pastors or somebody that's in vocational ministry. It's a mission to you. If you would say, I'm a Christian, then you're called. Mark 16, 15 says, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. What's a better way to preach the good news to all creation than YouTube? With, with the distribution from your home, from my home office here in Las Vegas, I'm able to connect with 174 people on here live. And if you're watching this on the replay, hit me with replay fam in the comments. Number three, we're called to be salt and light. Um, and uh, we'll get into number four in just a second. But I also want to remind you that if you haven't heard about it, next week, we're doing a three-day YouTube challenge, tube1kchallenge.com. And uh, link is in the description as well. I'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's get into number four. We need to scale up. This is a message to Christian content creators. Number four, we need to scale up. Let me give you some verses. Daniel chapter one, verse five. So you might know Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, Daniel chapter one, they're setting the context. And um, the King, King Nebuchadnezzar is looking for young men to serve in the palace, to serve as his advisors, to be a part of government, to be a part of influence. And these Hebrews who are in, who are in exile at the time, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego get selected for this. But this is what I find fascinating is they were trained for three years. And after that, they entered the king's service. It's interesting about this is these guys were trained. This wasn't Bible college. This was training in the ways of Babylon in terms of government. I think there's something that Christians struggle with when it comes to like looking for overly sanitized information when as Christians we need the skill of eating the mo the eating the meat and throwing out the bones. Moses learned all the different skill sets in Egypt. So if of course we need discernment and we have to be careful and we have to be thoughtful and we have to have a filter that we, we filter everything, of course, through the Bible. But what's fascinating to me is these guys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they skilled up. And Daniel, they had three years of training. This wasn't like, yeah, I'm kind of dabbling on my content creation skills. It's kind of, it's kind of dabbling, learning here and there, listening to Think Mighty a podcast every once in a while. This is training for three years but then here's what's fascinating. Daniel chapter one, verse 20. Whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them 10 times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in the entire kingdom. This was the original 10X, man. Grant Cardone didn't come up with 10X. Daniel did, right? Uh, and, and there's a lot of people with 10X. Like this is... So, so the king consulted them. They went through the same training that everybody else went through, but you should expect as a believer, 
You're a Christian content creator. You should be persuaded and convicted that he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. That you have God super on your natural. That you have access to the gifts of the Spirit. That you have access to the Word of God. The best besides the gospel and a rule of truth and, and the canon of scripture. It's also the greatest success book ever written. It's also the greatest book for content creators ever written. Like anything you could ever need in here. It's better than any self-help book, better than any trending business book. And I read a lot of books like, and, and I think that's the lifestyle of the Christian content creator. You spend three years in Babylon. You like Moses spending time in Egypt, but then also just knowing that 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 culture did not influence Daniel. Dan, Daniel influenced the culture. Lived a little bit of a different lifestyle. He had a different diet. Prayed three times a day, but also was trained. Number four is you got to skill up. Like if you are a Christian content creator, you got to go a little bit deeper at times than just like, oh, I'm just going to pray and my channel is going to grow. And I know like that's not what you think, but that's how some people like, if it's God's will, my channel will go. Mm, it's actually... God's will is that you would skill up. Like God's will is that you take responsibility. God's will is that you would meditate on the law, Joshua chapter one, so that in doing so, you may prosper in all your ways. That when you would skill up and learn skills and develop your skills and abilities, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. There's something that you have a responsibility in to skill up. And these guys skilled up, but then when God's super came on their natural, there's these magicians, these enchanters, and in every matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, King Nebuchadnezzar found them more capable, 10x so. So I just think there's going to be a revolution. I think we're already in it. It's cool to see different people that are creating content, you know, Alan Parr and Ruslan and Isaiah, and I got some other friends right now. I got some people that have been growing with shorts like crazy. Um, and these are like Christian channels, but then you also have like, you'd be shocked. I'm in a, a mastermind of, of Christian business leaders, people you don't even know that are in places of influence and with, with leaders of all different backgrounds, like God is up to something on the earth. It's, it's pretty incredible. And the opportunity for us as Christian content creators is to take skilling up seriously, but then also to entrust the whole thing. Man, I'll make his plans. God will direct our steps and trust your work to the Lord. And he will uh, help it prosper. And so there's something about skilling up and leading into the supernatural. Uh, Proverbs 22, 29 says, um, I don't know. I posted the wrong scripture there. Let's look it up. I'm on a Google doc here. You see someone who's diligent in business, they'll stand before Kings, not before co common men. Let me give you a different version of it. Do you see any skilled workers, truly competent workers? They receive before king. They will serve before kings, not ordinary people. It's my belief that the the lid on your content creator growth, it could be timing, and sometimes like it's it's good to use your season and obscurity to prepare you for popularity. I just talked with my friend Nicholas Barely yesterday about the theme of scripture being a lot slower than we would like in terms of viral culture. You know who went viral? was Saul. He got anointed king, put into kingship, and then he had a horrible fall, King Saul, because he didn't really have a lot of character development time. Meanwhile, David had lions, tigers, and bears, actually got anointed, so had to wait like seven years plus more years until he was like fully Judah king versus Israel king. You saw Moses like passionate, but made some mistakes in his life 40 years in the wilderness. Joseph had a clear vision of what he was called to, but then had to get thrown into a pit. Then it was like, cool, I'm in Potiphar's house. Shoot, now I'm in prison. And then eventually he reaches, his... sometimes it's going to take a little bit longer to get to your destiny, right? Sometimes the growth of your channel, use your season in obscurity to prepare you for popularity. But the cap ultimately on the growth of your channel is that your content sucks. I mean, do you see any truly competent workers? They'll serve before kings, not common men. Here's the promise that if content is king, so that when good content is posted to YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, the algorithm promotes it. If you develop competency, we need to skill up. If you work on your content, and I don't, 
I want this to be challenging, but also to be encouraging. I think about my, like Sean, I just discovered you. You're an overnight success. Yeah, overnight success just takes 20 years. I started shooting video in 2003 for my church. Started the first YouTube channel in 2007 for my church. Then eventually started a business called Clear Vision Media. Worked with different authors, speakers, have different background, have experience in the business world. Then went back and was a director of communications at a church and then started Think Media. Like, it's been a journey. And we're we're going viral in the last year. We've had a lot of viral Facebook reels. We've had a lot of viral TikToks. We've had, we, we're going viral right now on YouTube. We got, we just went from 4 million views a month to almost 10 million YouTube shorts. Oh, overnight success. Yeah, it only took 20 years. So there's just something about developing competency. You know, the first day also that David met Goliath, when David get, met Goliath, that wasn't his first day of using a sling and five stones. Like he wasn't like, you know what? I think that based on this, I can't go at him with armor and swords and whatnot. I'm going to go at him with a slingshot. I wish I would have learned how to use this thing. No, he had been training his whole life and preparing his whole life for this moment of opportunity that he stumbled into. He's coming out with a charcuterie board of cheese and crackers for his brothers, is tending the sheep and overhears a situation that's going on. There's something about committing to a season of building new skills, seeing every year of your life, whether you're crushing it right now as a content creator or you're just starting, as it's all preparation. And I am getting ready for that thing, that vision that God has given me, that picture that God has given me. Punchline is we need to skill up. That's actually one of the reasons. That's actually what we do as a company, by the way. And you probably already know that. We help you learn the skills of online video, of what can't, how to make your videos look crispy. Omar teaches you drippy, crispy videos, how to use the platforms best practices for using the platforms, changes in the platforms and algorithms, as well as the macro strategy, not just how do I start a channel and get some views? What good are views if you don't have a clear vision of your business model, of what is this all unto, is what is the bigger picture? What are the pieces? Is, is it bigger than YouTube? Am I going to be on multiple platforms? Do I need to build out a website? Am I eventually building out an offer or an email list? There's a long journey and a lot of skills to learn along the way. That's why we have our free podcast. That's why we have two YouTube channels. That's why we have our online courses and all kinds of different things. And if you haven't heard, and I just mentioned it, we are doing a free three-day YouTube challenge. It's all about how to get your first or next 1,000 subscribers. Tube1kchallenge.com is the URL. Link in the description as well. And uh, it's entirely free. It's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There's a morning session and an evening evening session. We have four special guests coming on sharing their tips. And it's going to be really fun. And it's entirely free. And again, uh, if like, Sean, what's the secret behind the door number one? At the end of the challenge and during the challenge, we will let you know about other things you can do with us. I have a book. I highly recommend buying it. It's YouTube Secret Second Edition. Or don't. During the challenge, we talk about our course, Video Rakit Academy. I highly recommend buying it. Or don't. Like it's just a way of skilling up and going faster. But regardless, we are committed to helping you win on YouTube. Our mission is to help 10,000 purpose driven people create a full time living, doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube and online video. Obviously, we, when we help that, and that's why no matter what your backgrounds or beliefs watching this, like you're welcome here. You can belong at Think Media, even if you don't believe what I believe. But we do want to help most of all. Our vision is purpose-driven people and people that are bringing good into the world, people that are light bearers, you know, people that are solving problems and, you know, entertaining and educating and bringing good. And we unapologetically acknowledge that there is evil. Satan's real. It's been interesting to see conversations between Andrew Schultz and J Joe Rogan talking about yeah, Satan's probably real. Like, look at how much evil there is in the world. One of the greatest things that leads many people to faith is actually when evil becomes clearer than ever. They go, oh, shoot, there must be a God. And, and, we, and we start that faith journey. And so we want to help uh, people share messages that matter light bearers, right? People that, that want to be solving problems, making the world better. And, you know, we're passionate. And so if that sounds like something you'd be into, 
That's at uh, tube1kchallenge.com. You can register for free. Um, hit like if you're getting value, and I'm going to do some Q&A in just a second. Put four question marks before and after your question if you have a question. The topic today is a message to Christian content creators, and I have a meeting at in 28 minutes. So that is the maximum that we can go today. Recapping, number one, you were created to create. If you're made in God's image, God is a creator. It's the first thing he revealed about himself in the Bible. It's the fifth word of Genesis um, is a creator. So it's time to create. Number two, we were given a mission from Jesus, teaching everything Jesus taught and all of scripture, which might include your DIY channel of bringing out the God colors in the world, right? Of art, beauty, fashion, music, creativity, gardening. Number three, you're called to be salt and light. Number four, you need to skill up. We need to skill up. We need to skill up continuously. I, I would shift the camera over here. Let me show you. I'm going to, I'll just go for it. Here's, here's what I'm working on right now, y'all. This is, this is my current to read list. All right. Um, and the reason I throw that out there is not because you have to read any of that or you, you can do whatever you want. But I just want you to to know, I mean, one of the things that I just strive to create distance from is between me and hypocrisy. Nothing that makes me more uncomfortable when someone says one thing and doesn't live it, you know? And so I, I just, it is my conviction and it has been my lifestyle that I believe that the best investment we can make is in ourselves and in learning new skills. I believe it's also the pattern of scripture. Jesus grew in wisdom and favor with men. Jesus at 12 was found in the temple asking other people lots of questions, having articulate questions, seeking wisdom, seeking to get better. Books, of course, is just one way. Uh, online courses, audiobooks, podcasts. It's a lifestyle. And the lid on your YouTube channel, I said it in love, is probably your content sucks. Among other things. And so what's the opportunity? To, how do you solve that problem? You skill up. You improve. You train for three years. You go out and repeatedly throw rocks at glass bottles. I don't know if David had glass bottles in those days. And, and increase your slingshot accuracy week after week, month after month, year over year. And then when Goliath arrives, you're able to have the precise target where you're able to hit this small area in the giant's head and enter into your destiny. Sure, God super comes on your natural. Sure, it that was a miraculous event, but it was it he prepared for that moment where his preparation met God's power and that's what we need to do as content creators as well. Number 5. We need to be wise and pure. Wise and pure. What? All right, here's the verse. Matthew 10:16. Look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and as harmless as doves. This is a message to Christian content creators. This is probably one of the most underread or understood verses in the Bible, and no one talks about this. So I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. First of all, it is this idea that like we kind of touched on this. You need to start creating, like you should create content. You should get on TikTok. You should get on YouTube. You should get out there. But but what about, but social media has some bad stuff on it. Yeah, it's a dumpster fire. But what do we do? It's understanding Yeah, there's not good people out there. There could be trolls out there. There could be hurt people out there. So there could be toxic stuff out there. You gotta have your discernment on. You gotta have your discernment on. Like I'm sending you out of sheep among wolves. It's also not necessarily gonna be easy. It's You're gonna face resistance. You're gonna face challenges. You're gonna face wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. What does that mean? A couple of things. So serpents never unduly expose themselves to attack. Something about being thoughtful. Sean, should my content be overtly Christian? Could be. Maybe I feel about doing it a little bit different. I have a different style in my content. Pray about it. Like that's like serpents never expose themselves unduly to attack. Jesus taught in parables. Though seeing like then there was a reason he did it. And without going into that, like he was thoughtful about his 
brand, about his messaging, about the context of, of the room, about who is listening, right? And so serpents never unduly expose themselves to attack. They also never provoke the enemy. Cunning and wisdom is another thing for this. Number four is, is we need to be wise and we need to be pure as Christian content creators. So shrewd as snakes, what does it mean? Subtle, crafty, shrewd, wise, avoiding snares that are set up for us. Discerning the difference in audiences. Jesus would do that. Storytelling to feed and weed. Jesus used storytelling for some people, because by the way, too, and, and even this training might make some people unsubscribe or, or not want to follow us, which is totally fine. Um, but ultimately, as you start sharing your message, don't be surprised. You're like, oh, I'm worried if I'm going to get haters or what if someone disagrees with me? That is the continuous theme of the entire Bible. If you want to be bold like Elijah, you have prophets of Baal that disagree with you. If you want to be bold like Jesus, in pretty much every room he was a part of, every context, there was people who didn't believe or got mad or got angry or disagreed. And ultimately, they imprisoned him and ultimately crucified him. And even as we share this in uh, Holy Week, approaching Easter Sunday, he overcame death in the grave and he rose again. But ultimately, you've got storytelling to be in different situations, different contexts, discerning the differences in audiences. You got to be shrewd, blunt when needed. I hope you're getting value. Let me know if you have any aha moments from this, kind of a little bit different than when we normally do. Shrewd as snakes. As a Christian content creator, you're called to be shrewd, wise. But then he put attention on this, right? Wisdom does not equal dishonored honesty. You know, one of my favorite books in the Bible, probably my favorite book is the book of Proverbs. James is the New Testament book of Proverbs. And James talks about wisdom. Not all wisdom is godly wisdom. So shrewd as serpents, the reason he's like in harmless as doves is because wisdom does not equal dishonesty. If we think we have to be careful, I think, as, as Christians, if falling into just clickbait, or too far into just drama, or is what we're doing just for views, or is it actually being effective? Are we spending too much time creating controversy even within Christians and the church, or are we actually being effective in reaching people and representing Christ? Um, wisdom does not equal dishonesty, and innocence does not equal gullibility. Got to be shrewd, thoughtful, careful, strategic. See, you nobody, most people would think about, you think about Jesus, you just present Jesus in culture. It's like, yeah, man, just love everybody and chill out, bro. You know, like, mm, it's kind of Jesus is zen out, you know, just loves people so much. You know, it's just true. Bring the little children to me. A lot of times you don't think of like shrewd and strategic. That's what we see here. And then innocent as doves, that means pure, no self-serving agenda, purity, um, because doves would be clean for animal sacrifice, according to Old Testament, and serving the Lord blamelessly. This is a message to Christian content creators. I highly encourage you to be considerate of Matthew 10, 16 as a mode of operation for a way that you conduct yourself with um, when it comes to creating content or thinking about starting a channel and how you do it. And once again, I want to encourage you, we need thousands and tens of thousands of Christian content creators sharing all different types of content. And just because you're a Christian content creator doesn't mean your content has to be Christian, like it only teaches Bible study the stories or something, right? But storytelling, some of the best films, one of the things we're passionate about, I think media, uh, Nolan Molt worked in Hollywood. Worked in LA, was definitely on a grind, 12, 14, 16 hour days. A lot of times like an hour or two commute because he had to live further out. He worked as a uh, stage hand and a grip on different shows and is passionate about making movies. Like when we think about what we're doing at, at Think Media, like we're still just getting started. We're, we, we're teaching YouTube and social media. We're doing some of this stuff. But as far as our vision and some of the people on our team in terms of storytelling, right? In terms of crafting redemptive content that might not be the chosen, which is awesome, but that's a certain type of content, right? Here's the message I'm trying to encourage you with. What has God put on your heart? 
what do you see? What's the vision you see? What is the conviction you have? What is the gap you see in the marketplace for music or creativity or YouTube or humor or entertainment or all of these things? What is the vision God has given you? In order to get there, we got to be wise and pure. Matthew 10, 16, you're going to need to be shrewd and you're going to need to be innocent. Um, I hope that's encouraging. And then number six, before some Q&A, we need to take action. We, we need to take action. And I just want to challenge you if you felt maybe discouraged because you have been creating content, it hasn't grown. I want to encourage you to get back in it. I want to encourage you if you haven't started, now's the time to start. I want to encourage you that um, uh, you're needed. Matthew 9, 37 through 38. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send out workers into the field. The opportunity on YouTube isn't the problem. The harvest isn't the problem. The need isn't the problem. The demand for Christian content and family-friendly content or content that you want your kids to watch or, or Gen Z and young millennials and elder millennials and Gen X and baby boomers sharing and helping and passing along wisdom to the generations, the demand for it is there. Supply and demand. The hunger for it is there. The harvest is not the problem. The workers are the problem. People taking action. People punching fear in the face and pressing record. People willing to go through three years of training to skill up. People willing to do the hard work and to defeat the lion and the bear and develop the slingshot skills needed to be ready when Goliath shows up. But I believe that's you. Like if you're watching this and you clicked on this video, I think you understand that God's put something, some passion on your life. You'd only be watching this video if you wanted to create content. You're faith-based, you're a Christian. So pray and take action. And I think there is something about this. Like I think a, a, a powerful prayer to pray is what that's the exact thing that Jesus said in this context. He's like, listen, the harvest is great. The demand on YouTube is there. There's 2.6 billion people and the platform is growing. Like the harvest is great, but the workers are few. We need more channels. If you feel like it's too crowded, you're wrong. We do need more content creators, not just content creators that lob stuff out there. You got to skill up. You got to be wise. Got to be strategic. And then I would, I'd pray, God, give me a vision. Give me a vision for the content you're calling me to create. Help me see the opportunity on the platform. Help me discern what my unique skill, gift sets, and abilities. Set me free from any like negative self-talk and comparison that just puts me into paralysis because I just feel like, oh, what's the big deal or what's the need or why would anybody care about what I have to say? You got to get rid of all that. Be strong and create courageous. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline of a sound mind. So get into that state and then ask for more workers into the field. Two things to pray about. One, God, give me a vision, strengthen me, help me, give me clarity on the content you've called me to create. And two, God, I pray for Christian content creators, those that are creating content right now. If you are here, you're a pretty unique person. Obviously, we probably met sometime or we're just meeting. We're here on Think Media Podcast. You may have been a part of this journey. But I want to implore you, that's why I wanted to shoot this video, is like to be more thoughtful that I really do believe you're called to creativity or else you wouldn't be watching this video. You're called to YouTube or else you wouldn't be watching this video. And here's what I mean. You're, you're, you're passionate about this industry. You're passionate about the creator economy. You're passionate about messages that matter, being platformed, being shared on YouTube. You're probably passionate. You're passionate about Jesus. You're passionate about the Bible and you're trying to figure out what does it look like to be a Christian business owner, a Christian content creator, or how can I share my faith and impact the world and change the world and solve problems? So again, if that's you, I want to challenge you that God would, he not only calls us to unique vocations, I think he calls us to unique prayer lists. If that makes sense. Like I pray for YouTubers. Is that That's what I'm trying to say. Other people don't even probably know who they are. They wouldn't think of it. Makes sense. This is our sphere of influence. You're here. 
So I'm asking you to pray. I'm asking you to pray for Think Media. I'm asking you to pray for me. Pray for Omar. Pray for Nolan. Pray for the content creators you follow. Pray for, and then pray for the people that you follow on YouTube. Pray for influence. Pray, like take prayer to a whole, that was the instruction. Pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers in the field. Pray for the, the most subscribed channels. Pray, like we just need more. Doesn't the world, I don't think anyone's gonna argue that the world needs more prayer, but when you discern and get clear, and this could be the moment you do it, I think this is my world. Like I like this world of, of content create. Like I started thinking, I, 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 get, I get invited to speak at these different events in the creator economy and all this stuff. And it's probably a largely non-Christian community. It's a, it's, I don't curse the darkness. So this my, I, thank God that I'm in this community and I love this community. And I want to see God's goodness and his love and his kindness experienced by this community. So your prayer list for yourself and for others, I think that's a needed thing and we need to take action. First Chronicles 12, 32, from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe and their relatives. Number six, we need to take action. All these men understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course of action Israel should take. One of my favorite verses, First Chronicles 12, 32, because the 12 tribes of Israel all had different skill sets. I think that this is a particular skill set that we need as Christian content creators. Two things that these leaders understood. They understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course of action Israel should take. What does that mean? We understand that television consumption is going down and YouTube consumption is going up. We understand that the number one platform being watched in American families' living rooms right now, more than Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max, is YouTube. We understand the signs of the times. People are spending more time on their phones. They're consuming more content. It's this whole other conversation about how healthy that is or isn't. But we should be lighting a candle there. The signs of the times. Where is people's attention? Where is the opportunity? Where is the need? We're also living in times where there is record depression, record um, loneliness, record suicide, record. We're living in a dark time where there's never been more need for salt and light. Man, what's happening in the times? We're living in an era of a lot of confusion. That's a vacuum for truth. They understood the signs of the times. And then they knew what the best course of action was to take. Wisdom, strategy. How do we approach this? If you're a Christian business owner wanting to use content, understanding where's modern marketing going, understanding how do I build a brand, a business, and stand out in this environment. Not only also then recognizing the opportunity or problems, but then knowing the solutions. And you might say, well, I don't know the best course of action to take. Well, that would be the thing to pursue in prayer and in learning and in scaling up. Last verse, Isaiah 6, 8. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. I feel like this, what, what's funny about this is like, sometimes we say, I don't know if I'm called to this, which you should certainly pray about because you may or may not be. But here's what I think is fascinating about this verse. People, you know, it says many are called, few are chosen. And too many Christians misinterpret that verse to think, oh, I'm just waiting to get called by God. Here's how I understand it. Have you ever moved, moved apartments or moved houses? Is there any worse thing in life than moving, right? Like your back hurts, you got to pack up. Have you ever helped a friend move? And they were so unready that you were so frustrated because you showed up. They're like scrambling their stuff all over the floor. They haven't boxed everything up. You're judging them. You're super upset. You don't want to be there. And they're like, yeah, uh, come help me move. And I'll give you like, uh, you know, some mug root beer and a Domino's pizza. You're like, that's a great deal. I was going to have an entire Saturday to myself, but mug root beer and Domino's pizza, <laughs> you sold me. What's funny about moving is if you call your friends to like say, Hey, will you help me move? All of a sudden, if someone knows you're moving, they see you on caller ID, they don't answer. Right. All of a sudden, if someone uh, knows that it's moving day, you call them and they go, Oh, ah, that's, I think I have a thing. I think that uh, I have a family thing or whatever. Many are called, few are chosen. 
So you call all your friends. Who who gets to actually come help you move? Anybody who says yes. I'm back. I don't know how long I was gone, but I hope you could hear me. So someone just goes, the call goes out, the call goes out. Oh, I'm too busy. I've got something to do. I've got something happening this week. But as soon as someone goes, yeah, I think I could help it. Then it's like, I choose you. You're on the team to help me move today. Somebody else goes, yeah, I think I could do it. You're like, you're chosen. That's what I kind of feel like is happening here in Isaiah. Because, you know, when he says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? It, it doesn't say, hey, Isaiah, will you go for us? And he's like, oh, yeah, here I am. It's like the Lord is shouting, who shall I send and who will go for us? And the cool thing is Isaiah was listening like he was willing. It's like many are called, few are chosen. And we could debate, de debate theology all, uh, all, all the time. It could be all different backgrounds. But I, I think that most of us would agree the call has gone out. The Great Commission has gone out, that that the, the calling is there. So if you're doubting your calling, let this be a sign. It's like the Lord is saying, yeah, if you feel the desires of your heart, like I want to express my creativity, I want to share my message, I want to create content, I want to put something out in the world, I want to do this. He's saying like, hey, who shall I send? Who's going to go? You could say, here I am. I mean, send me. Like, Sean, did you ever have a angel call you to YouTube. No, I mean, that'd be weird. And some things that anyways, uh, but that'd be cool. If that, if that's what happened to you, I've seen though, I've had a lot of different God encounters and a lot of different things that have happened in my life. Um, but I don't have any audible voice, but as I cracked the word open and I began to see God's revealed will in scripture, I just want to challenge you. Like a lot of times the desires of your heart. If you feel pulled in a particular direction, it's like you go to a bookstore, which, which section do you go to? I don't go to gardening. I don't even really go to history. You know, I don't really go to the children's book section, but now I do actually, because I've got kids, but I go to like the self-help personal development. I go to the business section. So it's like, there's just certain ways that God has wired you yet. He's calling all of us. He's like, yo, who's, who's going to go? Who's going to actually start creating this content? Who's going to start this new YouTube kids app niche channel with, with a particular type of, who's, who's going to go. And Isaiah was like, Oh, I'm glad I heard you. I'll, I'll go. And I think that that's the challenge for us as Christian con content creators. We need to take action. Uh, the harvest isn't the problem. The workers are, we got to understand the signs of the times and know the best course of action to take. And the call is going now. And it's an open call. The only reason few are chosen is because a lot of people don't want to come help you move. They're like, oh, skip the caller ID. God's challenging me to get out of my comfort zone. Oh, God's calling me to go move something heavy. Oh, I, I wanted to just take my Saturday off instead of sitting down, editing video, forgetting to turn the mic on, being super frustrated, reshooting the video, having my computer crash, putting it out there, feeling super discouraged because I don't like how I look on camera. I don't like how I sound. What's the point of doing this? I uploaded the video. I only got seven views. You know what? I'm not going to answer the call anymore. Many are called, but few are chosen. And I really do believe that God has unique gift sets, niches, channels, and topics for each of us. But most callings are going unanswered. I mean, a lot of people have said the best books, the best YouTube channels, the best albums, the best records, the best businesses, the best solutions to problems. You want to know where you can find them? In the graveyard. There were ideas in here or a call in here that never actually left for someone stepping out and pressing record. So I'm going to challenge you. We need to take action. Hey, if you got value today, hit the like button. If you got any questions, put four or five question marks before and after it. Hey, I appreciate some super chat. I want to support the message. I really appreciate you. Thanks for uh, the super chat. I'm just seeing these. And uh, there's a cycling one. Can I get to it? Thank you so much, Cohen Cycling. Really appreciate you. Uh, thanks for the love. It did freeze and I'm back, I hope. 
And if you, oh, here's another one too. Thanks for all the love. Signed up for your Facebook page. Um, does Christian content pay the bills? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it really does. Like we're living in an era where that, that, that's a whole nother touchy subject for another one. I wouldn't even say touchy Christians, money mindsets, you know, because there is Jesus talks like more about money than almost anything else. There's a lot of verses on money. And of course, greed is very dangerous and, uh, and making money the first thing, but Jesus ultimate thing was seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you as well. I think that, um, one of the things we'll be talking about on the challenge that's coming up is, is how to monetize. And so we're going to be talking about how to get your first a thousand subscribers, um, or your next and how to earn a thousand dollars in multiple different ways. And so lots of, uh, there is a real business model you can build around, you know, any type of channel. Thank you, Mimi, for the super chat. And thank you for being here. Smash like, um, if you, can you repost your question? If, um, if you, if you posted one for the younger guys who don't have a lot of time to record, record, what should we do? Um, I think you, sh it's about priorities. It's about discipline. And then it's about choosing what you're going to sacrifice. So number one, you make it a priority and what can you, and put it on your calendar. Number two, you got to be disciplined when you've got kids full-time work in school. It just takes more discipline to not be like, I don't feel like it. You got to summon that energy after work, go on a walk, get hydrated, crush a Red Bull if you have to, or do whatever. And then number three, though, is, is choose what you're going to sacrifice because of it, we only do have so much time in the day. But if you're like, well, I have to work full time and I need to have my four hours of video gaming and my four hours of shows, and then I need to work out and then I need to do this. And I just can't find time for YouTube. Question would be, what would you give up for a season? You know, Dave Ramsey always says, live today like no one else. So that later in life, you can live and give like no one else. One of the things I'm most passionate about, especially for young people, um, and you say, you know, for younger guys, I think in your 20s, if you live with fierce discipline and a high level of sacrifice, it'll ch transform the rest of your life. So if you, when everybody else just wants to go and hang out, or just wants to do something that's not moving you towards your goals and dreams. Of course, be kind, of course, be involved in community, but there's just so much and the data is in, whether it's gaming or time spent on our phone, not creating, just time scrolling, or it's, uh, and not a gaming YouTube channel, because that's cool too, but are you just gaming or are you building your brand and following the thing that you feel called to create? I think that a lot of us could benefit from the law of sacrifice. In order to go up, you've got to give up. Um, a lot of good questions. And let me know. Let me know your aha from this. And then let me know if you'd like me to do videos like this in the future. Um, I would uh, I would love your feedback. And um, I do have a meeting in just a few minutes. Sean, thank you so much for the message today. My God, use this to light a fire in both new and existing content creators. I appreciate you, Jesse's life. Um, can Fig Media create an updated made for kids video to help Christian content creators? Yeah, great. Added to the list. Really good idea. Michael says, trying to help the church I attend. We have no money to rent a space on Sundays. Such a powerful message though. How's a very small church with no money or a real building? I think that um, there could be a difference, Michael, between church content and like what I'm creating. So I would do what I'm doing, even if I was like a local church pastor. So doing live church well is a challenge. Like it is soundboard, how are we pulling audio, broadcasting worship is a real, like mixing it properly. If is it even good in the room, let alone good online. So I would stick with what you can control with the level of excellence and don't stream church, for example. So maybe, and the content you create at church could be social media and maybe some pictures and some Instagram stuff and some awareness. But here's my point. Think about what I'm doing. You you have a USB mic, a camera, a light, and you or the pastor or whoever could do a weekly Bible study. You could create a video podcast. You could, so, and this is a controlled environment. You don't want me to sing. So I'm, it's not going to be, a, I, I'm not going to do any worship videos like that. Praise and worship is not going to be happening right here. Um, it's a controlled environment. 
I can only do one. I, I can't have four guests on in this exact situation. I could have four guests on on StreamYard really easy. So, so that's what I think, Michael. Uh, my friend Brady Shearer from Pro Church Tools talks about um, talks about this concept um, called the uh, the one sixty seven, the one sixty seven. And there's 168 hours in a week. And most churches only have influence in one of those hours. People come to church. There's some music, some announcements, sacrament, whatever else. What do you do in the other 167? That's the opportunity. And the other 167 is, forget what I'm talking about this setup. YouTube shorts from your phone. YouTube shorts, green screen, reacting to culture, bringing biblical wisdom. YouTube shorts, just literally from your smartphone, vertical video, live streaming. You could bring guests on YouTube live now, just the same way as you can on Instagram. Um, social media content just from your phone, probably not in a Sunday morning setup. You could try to do it that there as well. Plug in a wireless mic into lightning port or USB-C, hook it up to pastor's you know, shirt, film, cutout clips. It, it really isn't about your resources. It is about your resourcefulness in a major way. So it's a really good question. So I hope some of that stuff's helpful. Yeah, the 167. Man, and, and this is, this Christian con content creators are called to the 167. Like, oh, one hour on Sunday is good enough. What? Like we 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 are one hour in Sunday in the word. One hour, not even, we're 28 minutes in the word. 20 minutes in worship. And then the rest of the week, we are being bombarded by news, by YouTube, social media, drama with your in-laws, you know, like there's a need of Christian content creators, redeeming, edifying, strengthening, strengthen, encourage, encourage, and build up prophetic. There is a need for Christian content creators to be pumping out valuable content. And I appreciate all these questions. Um, I've got a transition here. Let me see what, what these guys are doing. I should probably jump off here. Um, and so smash like if you're getting value and, uh, and if you want to, if you want to talk more about this, but also some specific tactics to one K challenge.com next week, not this week, depending on when the replay is April 13th or something. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days, morning and evening sessions, entirely free. It's all happening in a private Facebook group, tube1kchallenge.com, link in the description down below if you want to register. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. And uh, I really appreciate you, David. Yeah, thank you for hitting like, and thank you for um, uh, the love today, everybody. And um, I would love any feedback. I'm going to be able to go back and read this chat. So if you had any takeaways from today, I would love any aha moments you have. If you have any questions, I'm going to go back and read all the chat or leave it even better in the comments once the, the live stream is over. Um, and if you have any ideas or topics you'd love for me to cover, I kind of just wanted to put this out there. And, um, and so let me know your feedback. I appreciate you so much. My name is uh, Sean Cannell. This is the Think Media Podcast channel. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you haven't seen, I did a video actually about three Bible verses every uh, every content creator should know, no matter what your background or beliefs. I think you'll love that video. So click or tap the screen, uh, screen to check it out. Uh, send you massive love and respect. Uh, and we will talk soon. God bless.